Hello and welcome to Easy Like a Sunday Morn. Today is 30th of November 2014 and this is episode 36. It is currently 35 degrees Celsius and my throat is starting to tighten up because it's very, very hot and dry. And I drank a lot of water in the last hour, but it's still affecting my throat. And I've recorded this several times, so please bear with me. I'm probably going to lose my voice, but I've got a soldier on. I want to say thank you to everybody who tunes in each and every week, and welcome aboard to those who are listening for the very first time. Thank you especially to those who are listening to this on the iHeartRadio network, iTunes, YouTube, etc., Stitcher, Spreaker. Please click like or favorite the show so that you can get it in your feed next time. It also encourages me to continue going, otherwise I'm talking to myself. Okay, now... Today's show, I'm going to start off with a series of shout-outs because they lead into the show. The first shout-out is to the guys over at the Pod Socks podcast. The, the podcast is P O D S O C K S Pod Socks Double D, right? With the pod. Now, also, with the podcasts, please have Google open, please have Facebook open, and maybe have a pad and a pencil, because I have a code word that I've already selected this week, so you're lucky, that I play at the end of the show, just to let me know who's listening all the way through. Also, it gives you guys something interactive and a bit of fun, right? And I may be incorporating other sort of things like that into the show later on Uh, I don't know yet Uh, I'll have to think of some other ideas later on but the guys over at Podsocks are hilarious they are slightly politically incorrect and there's a little bit of swearing in there so but it's a great laugh and I really look forward to their podcasts uh, whenever they upload them and that's what I'm hoping to do with this podcast as well have something that people will be hanging on the edge of their seats for that they they want to listen to this every week <clears throat> the next group of people that I want to thank is the Couch Potato Podcast not to be confused with the Couch Potato Theatre YouTube channel two different groups, completely different groups the Couch Potato Podcast guys uh, did a shout out on their this week's channel, uh, this week's program because uh, we were talking about a show called Forever on Twitter and Forever is like a cross between Doctor Who and Torchwood, it's about this guy who gets shot 200 years ago and he's on a sailboat and he's um, fixing a slave uh, help, helping a slave to recover from something or other and these bad guys decide no 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 it's not worth saving the slave or you the doctor so they shoot the doctor he goes overboard and gets struck by lightning and so now when he dies he regenerates uh, naked in the nearest body of water and the question that I asked was his clothing disappears from the scene everything that he has on him disappears from the scene his body disappears and he shows up in the water now where does the clothing go where does the clothing go interesting question so that was what they were talking about and I think they're going to ask the networks to try and explain that little flaw in the program. <clears throat> but it should be good. should be good. I'm up to about episode 7 or 8 
with a show called Forever. It's worth checking out. Wow, it's been five minutes and I'm still doing shout outs. Okay, now the next group of people that I'd like to do a shout out for <coughs> excuse me is Steve Davis and Susan Lilly. Now Steve Davis and Susan Lilly and Colin Long are on a podcast called Another Boring Thursday Night in Adelaide and I've appeared or I've been mentioned on the show several times but what you guys can do if you want to is check out their YouTube channel it's A-B-T-N-I-A see this is why you need the pen and paper A-B-T-N-I-A go over and subscribe because the videos that they do are a preview of the podcast coming up the podcast is not on their YouTube channel but these videos are and they've got less than 20 subscribers so any subscribers that go over there make a big difference you may even double their numbers so <clears throat> do go over and do that now it turns out so I've been listening to the show Susan Lilly is incredibly funny she picks up on a lot of the double entendres that the other guys might not pick up as quick and you'll, you'll listen to the show just for her laugh you can find the show through Spreaker uh, not not Spreaker, Stitcher you'll be able to find the show on Stitcher or you can go to boringadelaide.com.au and the podcast is there where else it's it's out there you just google it it's in itunes and all the rest of it but i prefer stitcher as a as a podcast catcher because i can have all my favorites in the one <clears throat> in the one app now susan lily invited me to her ep launch for the song called daisy jane and i listened to all of her songs on Reverb Nation. If you want to look her up on Google, see if you had Google open, you'd know. Susan L I L Y on Reverb Nation, and the track is Daisy Jane, D A I S Y space J A N E, Daisy Jane. <clears throat> and that song has gone to number 14 in the Australian country music charts and it's been in the top 20 of those charts for the last five weeks that's amazing so congratulations Susan on that now I went to the EP launch and I discussed that in last week's show it was absolutely fantastic it went off without a hitch and these things can go pear shaped very quickly if they're not organized and stuff like that absolutely fantastic <clears throat> she had uh, two support acts one was a comedy magician by the name of scott stuns it's s-t-u-n-z and uh, he was absolutely hilarious he starts off not very funny at all and there's a point halfway between at the halfway point of his act where he changes gears and then he becomes hilarious so <coughs> he's worth booking what I'm going to do is suggest that if you've got Facebook open like I said in the beginning if you go to Susan Lilly right Susan spaced L-I-L-Y music on Facebook look her up click like and you'll get all her dates and tour dates and stuff like that. And I think she's going to Tamworth in January 2015. Tamworth is the would be the equivalent in Australia of Nashville in the United States in regards to country music. And Scott Stuns is 
great he's got a facebook page as well so click like on his facebook page book him for gigs uh you know weddings parties birthdays christmas functions you name it this guy is, is amazing he does a lot of sleight of hand card tricks uh fork bending and just psychology like he he's really got it down pat he doesn't seem like much but that's part of the misdirection that's uh, essential to magic for magic to work you, you basically have to act hopeless and then you flip it on the audience and then he's brilliant the other support act was a group by the name of cat dog bird including all the commas so it's cat dog bird like them on facebook they are brilliant as well there's samples of their music as well going back to susan lily she's got just to give her an idea of the music the sense of humor behind her music one of her songs is called got the monkey off my back which is to do with an ex a partner and get you know getting rid of these people that hold you back and things like that and the other song is you only kiss me when you're drunk hilarious stuff um but strangely enough these are not my favorite songs um i like there's a song called broken another one called butterfly uh miss you much there's uh, i think there's like 14 songs on the lp and was it 14 or 15 let's take a look because i've got it right here it's 14 and then there's five on the ep which includes live tracks and stuff like that but susan's got this um infectious giggle so you you do want to um listen to the podcast for that and if you want to double check that i'm telling the truth about her being number 14 on the country music charts the country music chart website is www.countrytrackschart.com.au and you'll find it you just do a uh, word search like a control f and type in daisy jane and it should come up as 14 do go out and buy the track locally or request it on radio so that uh, it's being pushed up the charts now uh, a little bit of a story anecdote was that uh, after steve davis had left meeting steve davis was great too uh, we talked about um podcasting stuff like that and he's only recording his podcast uh, in his office now i'm doing this from my bedroom so i can't really uh complain or, po- or point fingers but he was downplaying whatever but uh, it looks like he's got some professional equipment he's got a lot of gadgets and and that sort of stuff but uh he's playing it sort of fairly low key but uh it was good to know that he actually produces the website for another boring thursday night in adelaide because that's his main uh, business producing websites and things like that but uh after he left um the it turns out the cat dog bird the lead singer plays a, a multitude of instruments one of them is the ukulele and the other one is a um it's like a keyboard that you blow into and i don't know the name of it i apologize um and the music's absolutely fantastic uh, they're, they're brilliant anyway susan goes to say oh i'd love to rock the uke as short for ukulele but it sounded like she said i'd love to rock no it was uh, i wouldn't mind rocking rocking the ute or something like that and the ute is australian slang for a utility vehicle um, which basically like a pickup truck if you're listening to this in the united states and uh there's a certain activity that often happens in the back of pickup trucks and uh yes and there's a certain song that uh, deals with that uh, activity by a certain kevin uh, bloody wilson and uh her partner just gave her the the funniest look and um <laughs> and like she's saying oh no i mean i mean you know, i rock the uke not rock 
a ute. And anyway, he gives her the, this funny look, and she just looks, goes, I had a life before you. <laughs> and I said, well, are you dead now? And uh, she had a bit of a laugh at that. But it was great, absolutely great event. And uh, once again, please click like on their um, Facebook groups and, and things like that. And let them know that I sent you there because they're willing to promote me. Uh, Steve Davis actually did a name drop of the podcast here as well on his. We're getting there. We're getting there. He said, uh, easy like a Sunday morning. It's not easy like a Sunday morning. It's easy like a Sunday morn. Largely to stop me from getting sued, but we'll see what happens there. Okay, 15 minutes in, and I uh, hope you have, you've had a bit of a laugh. Scott Stuns was the comedy magician, and he did this little thing where he, he, he'd he get a girl from the audience, and there was a whole heap of girls dancing around on the front of the stage, and they added to the atmosphere, strangely enough. And he said, oh, so what's your favourite colour? And he, he knew that the girl's favourite colour would have been pink, right? And, um, oh, so they're all pink, pink, pink. And, uh, so he goes, oh, all right, you can have any color you want, you know, and then he pulls out this orange one, or this orange balloon. He goes, oh, I'll I'll make some, uh, balloon animals for you. And he sort of partially blows up the balloon, but he doesn't tie it off. And he hands it to the girl and says, oh, look, just hold this. Next minute, (laughs) you know, the balloon deflates and stuff like that, and everybody laughs, and... He does that a couple of times and and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, he was really, really funny. Absolutely hilarious. Let's move on, shall we? Okay. The Lords of Time 3 convention is a Doctor Who convention. And I didn't write down the notes. So I'll just reach over and get the little pamphlet here. And it has Katie Manning, who you may remember as Joe Grant, who was a companion for the third Doctor back in the 60s. Uh, Matthew Waterhouse, who played Adric, who was a character that pretty much everybody hated. Uh, Terence Dix, John Levine, Jeffrey Beavers. And they have just confirmed that Katrin Stewart aka Jenny Flint who is the offsider for Madame Vastra who I actually met last week name drop, name drop and uh, she will be turning up as well and I wasn't looking forward to going to this I normally don't go to Doctor Who conventions strangely enough um, but I will go to the uh, the cheaper ones because it's $120 for a ticket because and it's expensive, but they're flying these people out from the UK and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, but you get to meet several people, and then you've got to buy autographs and stuff on top of it. But the only reason I'm going is because back in February, I went to a Red Dwarf convention. Red Dwarf is another science fiction show from Britain. It's my ultimate favourite. Forget Doctor Who, Red Dwarf is the favourite. Anyway, there was footage recorded from Melbourne, the Melbourne Convention, of Chris Barry and Craig Charles in character bickering th- over s- through Skype because Chris Barry won't fly, so uh, but Craig Charles will come over. Um, and I wanted that, that disc, so that'll be $30 for the disc, but... I've been after the guy since February this year to get that disc. And um, he'll send me, you know, Candy Crush requests on Facebook. And in the time that he's playing, you know, Candy Crush, he could be, you know, slipping a DVD into a post pack and mailing it to me and earning some money. But no. Anyway, I can't be bitter because I'm going to waste money to get this disc and hopefully fingers crossed be making someone's christmas extra extra special now what else is happening 
the Star Wars trailer for episode 7 coming up next year, December next year, it's a long way out, and um, I decided to record myself, excuse me, my throat is starting to really parch up, Um, I recorded myself watching the, the thing live, so I thought that I'd be like, wow, this is amazing, this is fantastic, and I was just unimpressed. Um, reflecting on it now, some of the footage is quite good. It's quite amazing. I just, I, I think the problem was these things were, these scenes were out of context, and there was too long a black pause in between each one, and it's done for dramatic effect. It's just like, no, and no. Anyway, I uploaded that video, and it's got over 630 views on it so far, so I'm pleased there. I am looking forward to Jurassic World, and I think the fan reaction is a lot heavier for that. Um, I've also, speaking of Star Wars, I've just downloaded uh, a copy of Hidden Fortress, which is one of the films that uh, the original Star Wars films were based on. Um, I think the other one is Red Harvest but I don't know I don't know if I can actually get a copy of that or not but I'll be watching that later okay um what's going on oh the riots in Ferguson Missouri um for those of you that don't know it was a case where apparently a white police officer shot a unarmed black person and uh, look I mean I'm not going to go into the details of the of the of the case the reason there was rioting was because they the jury decided and the judge jury decided not to indict Dennis Wilson the cop because they didn't think there was anything to charge him with. Uh, Michael Brown was unarmed, but and then it gets technical. He, they, they were both big guys. I mean, these guys are six foot four. They are huge. And then it becomes a, a question of was Michael Brown unarmed? You know, was he charging? Was he surrendering? Did he have his ha- hands up? All I know is that Dennis Wilson pumped 12 bullets into Michael Brown. You can make up your own mind there. You just wish that alternatives were used. Um, You can't bring back the dead. And of course, because of, I think, a lot of this stuff get swept under the carpet I think a lot of this stuff probably happens far more than obviously in the, what the, the media reports and the sense of injustice that pervades throughout a community leads to riots and stuff like that and of course the joke is that they were breaking into stores like Dollar Tree like dollar shops like if you're going to raid somewhere raid somewhere you know with expensive gear but uh I do not condone riots, violence, and that sort of stuff. It's an unfortunate thing, really. Um, The other thing was that... um, And I've just breathed into the microphone, didn't I? I apologise for that. I'll try and clean that out. Um, The other thing was that... On Facebook, there was a... A meme going around of this priest who was he convinced his female practitioners to strip down or go to the beach strip down naked and line up and let this guy kiss their backsides in order for them to get husbands it's in a complete abuse of power I had said this is the danger of religion someone said the only danger of religion is segregation. But 
to me it's a bit more than that it's to do with the suppression of logic and rational thinking um, where this kind of abuse can be allowed to happen you know and this, there's got to be a point where you think uh, hang on this, this isn't right I'm not attacking religion someone accused me of being an anti-theist I'm not you can believe in whatever you like I personally don't like labels because who knows it's going to change next week my views and opinions change from week to week so I try not to lock into anything you know because <coughs> I know from personal experience if I identify with uh, one particular group or philosophy it becomes all consuming it's like oh how can you not see this is the truth and then I realise that no it isn't so i'm always questing looking for the truth in things and these things are yeah often subjective and uh need to be challenged often but anyway it's 26 minutes in and i want to say thank you for tuning in this week i was light on material this week i recorded this several times there's an issue that i am going to address next week because i wanted this one to be a little bit more positive i had a fantastic experience last week at the daisy jane ep launch do go out and buy it etc and i will deal with the unfriending of someone from way back in september and the fallout from that the reasons behind it etc etc boy wow it, it's really big and it the problem is it's fairly dark but we won't go into that what you guys are waiting to hear is the code word and the code word was selected several hours ago when i first recorded this and um, i've made it this far with with a parched throat and oh the code word 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 <laughs> i'm just teasing the code word is the word doctor d-o-c-t-o-r which is why you had your pen and paper handy it's the word doctor if you want to let me know that you are enjoying the show each and every week you can send me a tweet on twitter it's s-h-a-i-d-o and um if you want to follow the other guys uh you it's at p-o-d-d-s-o-c-k-s pod socks it's at couch potato podcast it's at boring adelaide and at susan lily oz so you can follow these people on twitter let them know that i sent you over there don't forget to rock the uke and rock the code word actually that should have been the code phrase i think rock the uke that would have been funny um yes yeah, so that's pretty much it pretty much it if you want to send me music or sound files that i can use in the show i'm not going to bother putting um intro music because it's late 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 and i'm just trying to fill out the last 45 seconds but if you want to send me an email shane underscore lockwood at hotmail.com and i will play it on the show now i know that musicians prefer to be paid for the work that they do i just can't afford to pay anybody at the moment well i can but i won't not yet not yet not yet i'll increase the listenership at the moment so may the rest of today and the rest of your week be easy like a sunday morn that's all for me this week. Catch you next week. 
Bye for now.